This video will focus on easy ways to remember lymph node drainage. I'll break down this by body parts in a simplified way, so you have all you need to know for the exam. Hopefully, this video will help you score some extra points on exam day. So let's begin. The head and neck drain into the cervical lymph node. So we can remember this by saying that the anything above the cervical spine drains into the cervical lymph node. Another way we can think of this is that anything above the clavicle drains into the cervical lymph node. So that's head and neck, cervical lymph node. Cervical spine, cervical lymph node. Above the clavicle, cervical lymph node. Choose whichever one is easier for you to remember. The exception to this is the esophagus. So the esophagus drains into the mediastinal lymph node. So we can remember this by saying meals go down the esophagus. So the M for mediastinal and the M for meals. So that should clue you into that the esophagus drains into the mediastinal lymph node. Also, the trachea is very close by to the esophagus. So the esophagus and the trachea drain into the mediastinal lymph node. So just to recap everything that we've learned so far, head and neck or above the clavicle drains into the cervical lymph node. The exceptions to this are the esophagus and the trachea. Meals go down the esophagus. Mm, meals, mm, mediastinal lymph node. So MM. Now let's continue. Now here is a picture of the axilla. So if you think about it, the axilla is kind of formed by the connection between our breast and our upper limbs. So the axilla drains into the axillary lymph nodes. So the axilla and then the axilla from axillary lymph nodes. So that's how we can remember that. This is very high yield to know in patients with breast cancer because these patients usually undergo axillary lymph node dissections or sentinel node biopsies. So just remember axilla formed by breast and upper limb they drain both of those structures the breast and the upper limb drain into the axillary lymph nodes so again for repetition remember head and neck drain into the cervical lymph node they're above the clavicle and the esophagus remember meals go down the esophagus so the esophagus drains into the mediastinal lymph node the trachea is close by, so it also drains into the mediastinal lymph node. The axilla is formed by the breast and upper limbs, and they drain into the axillary lymph nodes. If you are enjoying this so far and are liking the new mnemonics, please power up that like button and hit subscribe so you don't miss any more videos like this. So now let's take a look at the lungs. How I remember it is like, let's say a patient with sarcoidosis, they usually have bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy. So you can remember it that way because sarcoidosis can have an involvement of the lungs. So lungs drain into the hyalur lymph nodes. So before we look at the lower half of the body, just remember everything that we've talked about so far. Head. Cervical lymph node, it's above the clavicle. The esophagus, remember meals go down the esophagus, the M in meals and the M in mediastinal lymph node. Also, the trachea is close by, so it also drains into the mediastinal lymph node. The axilla is formed by the breast and the upper limbs, and both of those structures drain into the axillary lymph nodes. And finally, in conditions such as sarcoidosis, we can see bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy. So the lungs drains into the hyalur lymph nodes. So now that we have all of that covered, let's take a closer look at the lower half of the body. So everything below our umbilicus is drained into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes.
We can remember this by saying south of the umbilicus. So the S in superficial and the S in south. That should be the clue to let you know where the lower half of the body drains into. Superficial inguinal lymph nodes south of the umbilicus. But there are two exceptions to this rule. The first exception is our gonads and they drain into the paraaortic lymph nodes. How we can remember this is that the P in paraaortic lymph nodes drains the pair, so P and P. So the pair of ovaries, the pair of testes, the pair of kidneys, they all drain into the paraaortic nodes. So I mentioned two exceptions. So that's the first one. So the second exception is that the posterior calf and the dorsal lateral foot are drained by the popliteal lymph nodes. So remember, for the lower half of our body, everything drains into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Remember, superficial south of the umbilicus. But there are two exceptions. The first exception are the pairs. The pair of testes, a pair of ovaries, a pair of kidneys. And those are drained by the paraaortic nodes. And the second exception is the posterior calf and the dorsolateral foot that are drained by the popliteal lymph nodes. So if you want to do some high yield questions of how examiners commonly test lymph node drainage, be sure to watch this video until the end. So, so far we've discussed almost everything in the body, but as you can see, I kind of skipped off the GI system. So this is because for the GI system, the lymph node drainage follows the arterial blood supply. So let's say that the ileum is supplied by the superior mesenteric artery. Then the ileum is also drained by the superior mesenteric lymph nodes. And that is a high yield concept that will earn you some extra points on the exam. So here is a diagram of a body. If you want, you can pause the video here and try to divide the body and Recall what we've learned so far on your own. If not, are you already finished? Let's go. So the head and neck are drained into the cervical lymph nodes. Remember, anything above the clavicle or the cervical spine is drained by the cervical lymph nodes. The exception to this is the esophagus, which drains into the mediastinal lymph nodes. Remember, meals go down the esophagus and the m for meals and the m for mediastinal also the trachea is close by so it's also drained by the mediastinal lymph nodes the axilla is formed by the connection between the breast and upper limb and the axilla is drained by the axillary lymph nodes it's also important to note that the skin above the umbilicus is drained by the axillary lymph nodes. Okay, now let's go below. So below the umbilicus is supplied by the superficial inguinal nodes, or south of the umbilicus is supplied by the superficial lymph nodes or drains into it. So the exception to this is firstly the pairs. The pair of ovaries, pair of kidneys, and a pair of testes. The second exception is that the posterior calf and the dorsolateral foot is drained by the popliteal lymph nodes. So again, the pairs of ovaries, pair of kidneys, and pair of testes are drained by the paraortic lymph nodes, while the posterior calf and the dorsolateral foot is drained by the popliteal lymph node. And remember, the hilar lymph node drains the lungs. We can remember this by thinking about the bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy that's seen in patients with sarcoidosis. Another high yield fact to remember is that the lymph 
drainage of the intestines follows the blood supply. So if an organ is or supplied by the superior mesenteric artery, it's also drained by the superior mesenteric lymph nodes. For the lymphatic system, all of these different drainage systems drain into other larger systems. So one of them being the right lymphatic duct. It is also called the right thoracic duct. So it drains lymph from the right head, right neck, right arm, and right thorax above the diaphragm. These structures all drain into the right lymphatic duct. However, the lymphatic system for the other areas of the body empty into the thoracic duct. Now let's do some questions to test what we've learned so far and to emphasize some other high yield facts. A 27 year old male presents with fever, vomiting, and right sided scrotal swelling. Scrotal ultrasound reveals a right sided scrotal abscess. Which lymph nodes is most likely to be enlarged? A. Paraaortic B. Superficial inguinal Or C. Axillary So right away we can just get rid of option C. Axillary Because the axillary lymph nodes drain the upper arms and the breast And also the skin above the umbilica So that option is out So A. Paraaortic that seems like a good option, but the thing is the paraerotic supplies the testes and this patient is having a scrotal pathology. So the paraerotic lymph nodes don't drain the scrotum. It only drains the testes. So the answer here is option B. It's very high yield to know that the testes are drained by the paraaortic lymph nodes while the scrotum is drained by the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Now let's do our last question. It has two parts. So part one says a 52 year old female presents with a rash on her right breast for four months. Exam reveals an erythematous rash, swelling, and dimpling of the right breast. What is the cause of these skin changes? A. Lymphatic obstruction B. Allergic reaction or C. Mastitis So we can exclude option C as the answer because mastitis usually presents in younger women with or who are breastfeeding. So due to this woman's age, we can eliminate option C and her other clinical findings as well. For option B, an allergic reaction. So an allergic reaction could cause a rash. However, the other features of the dimpling of the breast would not be typical. The best option or the best answer is option A, lymphatic obstruction. So in inflammatory breast cancer, Cancer cells spread to the dermal lymphatic spaces and obstruct lymph drainage. This leads to the development of podorage, which is indicated by the dimpling of the breast. These patients also experience swelling, a red rash, and it can be extremely itchy and tender. So part two of this question, the clinical vignette is the same. But the question changes. It asks what lymph nodes are most likely enlarged? A. Cervical B. Superficial inguinal or C. Axillary So remember that the upper limb and breast meet from the axilla and these structures drain into the axillary lymph node. This is why many women with breast cancer undergo axillary lymph node dissection or do sentinel node biopsy. So the answer here is C, axillary lymph nodes. If you liked this content, be sure to power up the like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell. If you have any cool mnemonics to add, be sure to comment down below. To continue learning, click this video right here. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.